This is part two of five on chapter four, general features of cells. In this part of the chapter, we're gonna be looking at cell structure, specifically prokaryotic cell structure. Cell structure is determined by four factors. So one is matter. So remember anything that takes up space and has mass is considered to be matter. And this matter is made up of atoms. And then there's different types of atoms called elements. So we learned about that in chapter two and three when we talked about the chemistry. The second factor is energy. So all of these living cells, they need energy. They either have to produce their own energy or they have to get it from some outside source. So we're gonna be looking at parts of the cell that are used in energy. Number three is organization. Cells are actually very organized and they have very specific parts. So the majority of this chapter is going to be looking at the different parts of the cell and what those parts do. And then the fourth factor is information. So all cells, they need to hold genetic information. So pay attention to where this genetic information is actually stored in our cells. So life can be placed into two different categories based on what type of cell that organism has. So the first type of cell is called the prokaryotic cell. And the prokaryotic cell is very tiny. It's actually the tiny little orange structure in the bottom left hand of the image on the slide. The big red structure, that's a eukaryotic cell. And if you kind of look into the red structure, you'll see that there's purple and yellow and blue parts inside of that cell. Those are gonna be the different organelles that are found in eukaryotic cells. So we're gonna start off with the prokaryotic cell. So prokaryotic cells, like I mentioned, they have really simple cell structure. And what makes a prokaryotic cell a prokaryotic cell is that it lacks a membrane enclosed nucleus. The nucleus is where you can store genetic information, but instead of storing it in a little enclosed membrane, the genetic information in a prokaryotic cell is kind of just in a region, so it's not protected by any membrane. In prokaryotic cells, you're going to find prokaryotic cells in two of the domains, the bacteria domain and the archaea domain. So remember, bacteria, their prokaryotic cells are found pretty much anywhere. The archaea species, they also have prokaryotic cells, and they're usually found in really extreme environments, like the hot springs that's pictured. This is a cartoon drawing of a prokaryotic cell. We're actually going to use a cell, and we're going to go through the different parts. And there's eight different structures or eight different parts that we're going to be looking at. So I'm going to talk about the structure of the part, so what it looks like, and then the function of the part. We're going to start off with the plasma membrane, and on the cell diagram, I have outlined the part we're talking about in red. So if you can find the plasma membrane, that's what we're going to be looking at first. So the plasma membrane, it's made up of a double layer of phospholipids. And we're going to talk a lot more about the plasma membrane in chapter 5. But for right now, the plasma membrane, it serves as a barrier, or it tells you um, what's inside the cell versus outside the cell. It also is selectively permeable, so it allows things to move across or go in and out of the cell. Our next structure is the cytoplasm. So if we go inside of the cell, we have this liquid that has enzymes, which are a specific type of protein that help with metabolism. We also have ribosomes, and we'll get to the function of those. And then you also have lots of solutes dissolved in this liquid. So the liquid is mostly made up of water with all these solutes and molecules in it. And the cytoplasm, the function is metabolism, so chemical reactions in the cell. Inside the cytoplasm, we have the nucleoid region. This is where our genetic material is found. 
and it's in the form of DNA. And then you also have the little orange ribosomes. Ribosomes are the structures that synthesize proteins. They actually create the proteins. So ribosomes is where all those amino acids are put together. Outside of our plasma membrane, so if we go outside, we have the cell wall, which is directly outside the plasma membrane. The cell wall, it's made up of a carbohydrate and it's used to support the cell and give it shape and also to protect the cell. Outside of the cell wall, you can have another structure called the glycocalyx. And the glycocalyx is just another form of protection. It can trap water to prevent the cell from dehydration. Sometimes the glycocalyx is more condensed and it forms a harder capsule. And those capsules help the bacteria cells evade immune systems. So bacteria cells that make you sick, they usually have a capsule around them and that helps them to survive when your white blood cells attack. Then our last two structures we're going to look at are called the appendages. So we have the pili, those are the short yellow hair-like structures that are all over the cell. The pili are used for attachment. So they use these pili to attach to surfaces like our skin, our intestinal tract, or to the desk. The flagella, which are the purple longer structures coming out the bottom of the cell, those are used for locomotion. They help the cell move around in the environment. And just to show you these structures on kind of this cartoon drawing that we've been using, they match up really well with real bacteria cells. So on the right we have a electron micrograph of E. coli. So you can see the nucleoid region in the middle, that's where that DNA is. You can see the plasma membrane, you can see a cell wall, and then you can also see the um, pili, and flagella as well. So these are actual real structures that we can see using electron microscopes.